Coach Thatcher, great first session. Thank you. I love, here's my thing. That stuff was incredibly boring to people who don't know what they're looking at. Yeah. To me, that is the essentials, how you should start every match yeah. and how you should begin to attack people and crowd people and head hand hands. Yeah. What you were doing was like building blocks of being super successful and pesky towards other people, yeah. right? We were talking about earlier, Nate Burnett, He's real, he's real good head hands, uh -huh. right? And then he beat a really good guy in Fargo. He beat a four-time state champ in Fargo, a guy that's going to Oklahoma State. What's the key to you? Like, sometimes this stuff's boring. How do you keep it so that kids can stay engaged in what you did? Your Sasha was really good. Yeah, it's hard. I think they feed off, off of the passion we bring as coaches, and you got to keep them engaged. It's, uh, it's baseline fundamentals, and like you said, it's boring. Um, it's just you try to keep them engaged any way you can. And each group's different. You gotta find what buttons to push. I think they did a good job. Um, and you gotta keep it moving. You gotta keep it moving. You let them start talking, let them start slacking a little. It's it gets gets away from you. You didn't do any of that. It was awesome. Yeah, you got you like you're saying. You kept it was really good. Yeah. Like I wish my kids actually would have been here for it. Yeah. Just to see grabbing wrists, yeah. shooting. I love how you were shooting to a tie. To a tie yep. That is so, like a lot of people don't teach that. Yeah. I remember my brother, Tate, like his junior year of high school, he really started shooting the ties. Yep. And nobody knew how to solve it, and he won yeah. a state title. I think, I think if you go and watch the high-level kids' tournaments, or even, even high school, it's, it's making contact, establishing contact is the biggest flaw you see. And uh, if you can teach kids how to safely get to where they score and protect your legs, um, at the same time, it's the key to wrestling. Winning position. That was, a, a, yeah, you know, the position, position that – when you're talking winning position – that means like, hey, you are in a position to take people down, Yep. right? You are in a position to win each match. Yep. And then when you talk about, hey, if I told you, if you could get in this position five or six times a match to beat the best guy in the state. No, that's great. And I don't think a lot of people think like that. Yeah. Where does that thinking come from? Probably being lucky and being around a lot of good coaches throughout my whole life. Just learning from different people. Matching what I like from this guy and that guy. What I found out worked for me and what didn't work for me. Um, you know, I think, I think uh, I remember coming out of high school being a pretty good wrestler, and then you go into a good college wrestling room, and it might be three months before you get the first takedown. And you start realizing, like, you got to learn how to wrestle. So after spending close to 20 years in a college wrestling room and watching four time after four time after four time state champ come in and struggle, you start seeing where they need the most help. And it's you can't just shake hands and go grab someone, pick them up, and throw them down. You have to have some kind of tactic. Most people, there's some freaks out there, but um, it's just finding winning tactics and what helps kids. So. In the last 25 years, you've been a part of two of the best programs ever, right? And if you go to Oklahoma, if you talk Oklahoma, you're in Oklahoma, right? Yeah. That's what a top the last 50 years, right? Traditionally, actually, done better than Penn State and Ohio State throughout the years. Yeah, and the last I'm saying last yeah. 50 years, you'd put Oklahoma above those other two. That's what's why a lot of people don't know that because they don't, they don't go back far enough in the history yeah. to Danny Hodge even, right? Yeah. So when I look at that, you know, you've been at the three of the five most successful college programs in the last 50 years, right? Yeah. Oklahoma, Ohio State, Penn State, yeah. right? It's not up for debate. It's literally if we went and looked at counted team titles, Fair. that's what it would be, right? Fair. So when we look at that, you know, you've been at such a high level. Mm -hmm. Logan Stever's a killer. Yeah. I mean, you you know you were at, you were there for that. We talked about it. You coached in the greatest heavyweight match in the history yeah. of NCAs from Lesnar to yeah. right to Neil. Yeah. You you were the next you know next yeah. closest thing with uh, Snyder and Gwiz. Yeah. So you've been there. You've done that. You've been all around. When you take all of it and you're you're in a youth wrestling room, are you, are you ever like, oh man, I was at the highest point you could be yeah. in college? How do you how do you not how do you not how do you stay grounded? I, I, guess? I tell everyone that I love and cherish all the memories and experiences I got from coaching at some of the best programs and some of the best athletes. And getting to coach overseas and wrestle overseas. The last four years I've been with the younger kids, I almost wish I would have started this 20 years ago. The younger age kids, if you can get them where they don't have bad habits and what you teach them, they start doing, and then you see them making it a little bit of their own, it is a blast, like an absolute blast. I'm, I've got some kids that are absolute world beaters right now that have just started training with me this summer, but they're coming from other programs. And the bad habits that are formed are so hard to break. 
and it started reminding me a little bit of college where you get a four-time state champ and or a three-time state champ. They've been winning their whole lives and they think they can come in and not change anything when they're still learning to do. And that breakthrough, I had that with Miles Martin a little bit where we butted heads a little bit at the beginning. He was like, well, I don't do that. I don't do this. And I was like, okay, you gotta work through those battles and then you start meshing is good. These little kids, to me, it's no, I don't care if I'm in Madison Square Garden or at Youngstown at OAC or in the Bishop Watterson gym. It's, it's still coaching to me. And I love these young kids. It's a blast. You're super into it. Like I never get that vibe ever like that. He's like, man, this guy doesn't want to be here. I never get that vibe. I always oh, get like, yeah. he's stoked on being no, here. This is my passion. That's like, hard though. I told Jared in an interview I did with him. It's like, it's like my other church or my other drug. Like I don't do drugs, but it's like, it really is what gets me going outside of my wife and kid and my mom and dad and brothers. It's I'm a very, very lucky guy. I get to do what I love to do seven days a week. Where does it go from here? You know, you guys, this is the Watterson room. It's also the Crazy Goats room. Yeah. Where do we go from here and where do you go? Do you, fo do you follow a high school team? Where do you do as far as your coaching? So yeah, this hasn't really been announced yet, but I'm going to be a Watterson coach, Bishop Watterson coach. We've been building their community team up for the last five years. So in the next two to three years, you're going to see, well, you're actually going to see some freshmen this year that we've been working with coming in. Um, but they didn't have a program four or five years ago. And with Tommy and Phil Anglum and a couple other people, we've been building this program up and it's time for me to step in and start helping the high school team, the junior high, and continue. My club will always be my first priority, the Crazy Goats. But as you know, Tommy's club, his community club, the Little Eagles, my club, we work together. All the kids are starting to get older, so we're gonna keep feeding them up, the newer and younger kids. But I'll start two days a week. I'll be with the high school team this year two days, four days a week, I'll be with the junior high um, and I'll have my crazy goat club. And next year I'll be a full-time coach at Bishop Watterson. So, and people don't know it because, you know, about, we just, Bishop Watterson, I think last year or the year before was the first year they were actually back to being a high school team. No one knows what we've been doing the last five years. I, I do, because yeah, I see it. Yeah, 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 I see yeah, it on the OAC you stuff. See it, but we're going to come out of nowhere. And well, not really. Well, not after the... <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's... it's uh, I'm excited. The, the families and the kids have been together for a while now, and it's going to be fun. Tommy sent me a text like 3 in the morning, I think, last night. He's on vacation. He probably couldn't sleep, and he's like, I can't wait for the next 10 years. Like That's awesome. We're going to change so many lives, help kids get to college, help, help kids learn how to be good fathers and parents and husbands in the future it's 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 what we love and uh, i'm getting chills look at that i'm getting chills just thinking about it the last okay so you're a reedy guy the last central ohio team to win the state championships in the state of ohio any division i want to say is reedy was it like the DeSabato ken ramsey team i want to say 87 it was after that 88 it was 90 or 91 maybe so early 90s. So you, you, you had, you had uh, Dom DeSabato, you had James Smiles, you had Brian Cruz, Jason Amacon. I believe that team won when it was in Xavier. I think Xavier. Oh, yeah, Cincinnati. It was a year before it went to right Cincinnati Notre Garden. Garden. That yes, was the yes. horrible venue. I was a little kid. Horrible venue. I was a little but they kid. won in the 80s, too. Oh, yeah. yeah. They won with, no, Ray, with Ken Ramsey, and Bob they Bob won with yep, the yep. DeSabatos. Bob Stoll was the coach. Yes. Um, Bob Stoll and Mickey Balmer, who was my coach, took over after that, but... Um, as a kid growing up, DeSales and Reedy were powerhouses, just two different divisions. Yeah. And Zimmer's the first, was, you know, first four-timer. First four -timer. But this was like, I'm sure there's other places in Ohio that do this, but like when there was dual meets, it was like, if the gym only held three, 4,000 people, there were 6,000 people in there. Yeah, Maples, Maple. I went to a Maple Walsh yeah. duel like that. Ed's Walsh duel. I've been to it. Yeah, it's crazy. That's how I got to grow up That's learning really wrestling. Cool. And then uh, Xavier, when I was at Cincinnati Gardens, it was the first trip my parents let me go anywhere without them. So I was the little kid that went with the high school team and got to watch them win state. Wow. It was pretty neat. So that, yeah, so that carried you. Okay. Can you guys replicate that at Watterson? Can you guys do yeah, in Central Ohio what, what those teams did in Central Ohio? Yeah, I, there's, there's no doubt. We're doing it the right way. We care more about the journey. Here's the funny thing. I think Tommy and I both, and this gets cliche because we say it all that, we both like to keep score. We're both competitive, we wanna win. If the next 10, 15 years, we never win a state title, it's not gonna change the outcome or the goal of what we were doing. 
I'm biased. I think we're good enough in the product that we're starting to turn out already. We're going to win state titles. If it doesn't happen, listen, the kids, if the kids have good grades, they're good kids outside the wrestling room and they're fighting hard and whatever success they have, it gets them to that next step in life. We're going to be happy. But it's, I don't see, and I'm, again, I'm probably sounding cocky and arrogant here, but I don't see with what we've been teaching for the last five years and the kids we have, if they continue to love wrestling and we keep building up the next group and the next group, I don't see how we don't. Um, I think we just have, we care about doing it the right way, if that makes sense. Okay, you guys in your central Ohio diocese do a really bizarre thing. It's it's really bizarre. Yeah, you got to live where you live. Got to live in good. the district of yeah. the school that it's it keeps, bizarre. I've it never heard of it. It keeps it fair. Yeah, no, no, but I, I'm just telling you, like I talked to people out west. They're like, what is this thing? Because Colin Palmer does some stuff out west. They're, they were telling me Palmer's guy has got to live in the district, but it's a private, it's a or it's a, you know it's a Catholic school and I'm like no that's what they do in Central Ohio yeah. and it threw a lot of people off they don't get it yeah. so what where did, did you live in West Columbus where did you actually live that you went yeah. to Reedy and the, the Sabados grew up in West I, Columbus I, right yeah we all I lived three four blocks away from Bishop Reedy it was easy so it's West Columbus yeah it's like the hilltop it's the west side of Columbus okay and then if you live in Dublin you go to Watterson Dublin I don't know where the cutoff is but I know like I live over in Hilliard. And that whole area where I live all go to Watterson. I Got believe it. Dublin kids go to Watterson as well. Okay. And then but kids. But they, they have their checks and balance. I mean, you, you go and you talk to the principal, the deacon, you talk to the person in charge of attendance, and you know before anything gets started, like, this is your school. Got you it. have to go to the school. And we're not, we're not going to be in the game of trying to load the deck. We don't want to raise kids up for the last five years and then bring people in and they don't get a spot to wrestle in. We're going to build it up our own and go attack eagles community club ultimately is those eagles are your those are your first goats, yeah. those are the kids that are going to be waters yep, yep. that that's you know what i mean because because palmer's at DeSales, yep. and now because they're north and west columbus or north and east columbus north I believe. and east yeah so that's the sales yeah like i think the what i believe is like the olin tangy that northern west just above dublin is almost like right in between where you get to choose Boom or boom. Wow. There's a couple areas. Because like that would be Reedy or yeah. Watterson, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, that's crazy to think. Because people don't understand it, though. Like, I was trying to explain it to people out in the you know, Idaho and Washington. They, like, didn't get it because they'd never heard of that. Yeah. Because I think you're one of the only cities, major cities in America that does that. Yeah. It's kind of crazy. It, it might be. I don't – I've never thought about it because I grew up where I lived. I went to school. Mm. And that's what we're going to do at, at Watterson. Ultimately, um, moving forward, you know, like what's the ultimate goal? Obviously, a state championship for Watterson's a goal for you, but what do you want to see out of the crazy goats? What do you want your crazy goats? Just, just development and keeping the kids loving wrestling. There is a huge drop off what I found, and Jared kind of confirmed it at that Division three, Division four level. You know, when the kids were a little, they'll all look up to you. They'll listen to everything you say. They're happy. You keep it fun. But when they get to a certain age where they start learning, they can like say no to mom and dad or no to coach. It's like, if they don't love wrestling, they're not going to be any good at it. So it's just keeping them loving the sport. And it's hard because we're in a hard sport. So it's a double-edged sword. you got to teach them what adversity is. you got to teach them how to get through adversity, but also to have fun. And so it's, I think I do a very good job at that. I think that's what I do the best at. Not to pat myself on the shoulder, but um, I think it's, it's keeping the big picture of everything. Like, wrestling isn't everything. When we're in here, this is important. But I care more about your schools. I care more about how you treat your parents. I care more about how you treat your neighbor. You know, like, let's talk about other things than wrestling. When we're doing wrestling, this is what we're doing. It is important. But let's not make it everything. And if you lose a match, let's learn from it. Not, let's not yell at you. You know, it's like, let's just get better at life. That's... I, it probably sounds fake and cheesy, but I, I really am a huge believer in that. Like, so that's what I try to preach to my crazy goats, and I want to build it. It's how I support my family. Um, I make that very clear to all my people. Um, but um, I think if you come to one week of one of my practices, like the proof's in the pudding. Like, let's get better. It doesn't have to be psychotic.
<laughs> okay, you said that today. You raised your voice. You didn't even yell. You raised your voice and you're like, hey, I'm not a psychopath. Yeah. yeah. That was my favorite part, actually. Yeah. Like, besides all the super meticulous, boring, yeah. necessary, well, get was, your head and hands I in the way. I was losing the kids a little, so yes. that's why I raised my it was voice awesome. to wake them up. But when people watch this interview, they might think you're a bit of a psychopath because we've got a Penn State hat on. <laughs> we got, we got <laughs> Explain that to people, please. I, I I know you. I know your history. Yeah, I know you want your two-time state champ at Reedy High School yeah. here in Columbus. Why a Penn State hat? Why an Ohio well, State shirt? Why? I grew up in Columbus. I'm the biggest Ohio State football fan. Huge, huge Buckeye Even against fan. Penn State? Um, yes. That's weird. And I'm going to get killed by my Penn State friends if they ever watch this. They won't. Um, they won't. Don't worry. So, but, they might. They might. But when I was a junior and senior in high school, all the best kids from Ohio were going to Penn State. Penn State had just entered the Big Ten, and Ohio State hosted the Big Ten tournament. 93, I was there. Um, Randleman and Coleman won it. Randleman and Rex Holman won it. Yeah. So, uh, Kerry Colott was a freshman. You had uh, Troy, who was my ho head coach, wrestling. Um, I always liked the logo. I mean, yeah. When you're young, it's, yeah. it's just this or that. But they offered me a full ride, and I went to Penn State, and I followed guys like Eddie Jane and Clint Musser, who were like everything in the state of Ohio. And you had Glenn Pritz off there and Biff Wall. I, just tons. They had number one recruiting class like two, three years in a row, and they were every year a top six, top seven team. And I was like, that's where I want to go wrestle. So I spent five years at Penn State wrestling, and they asked me to coach. I spent three years coaching there. And I mean, you spend eight years of your life somewhere. You're, I'm a Penn State alum, yeah. Penn State coach, captain, all American. Like, it's my blood. Um, but after eight years, you move back home, coach at Ohio State. It's where you grew up. It's just Ohio State's part of it's my life. The Norman home, thing. Who recruited you to Norman? Sammy Henson. Sammy brought so you up there. Sammy and I coached at Penn State for two or three years together. And then that was a whole other situation. But he was he got hired to be the head assistant out there. And they said, if you do good, you'll become the next head coach. Hire who you'd want to hire. He hired me and Mike Leitner. We, they went from pretty bad to top five in the country the first year. And we raised it. Well, I'm not going to get into it. They were good. Anyways, they were Sammy, real good. Sammy recruited me out there. We did a heck of a job while we were there. Yeah. Uh, and then I came back to Ohio State and won a national championship. And But I mean, I was born a Buckeye. Yeah. But I chose to go get my degree and wrestle for Penn State and coach there. And So my wife makes fun of me. I either have Penn State, Ohio State, or Crazy Goat stuff on. Like, I own no other clothes. <laughs> she tries to buy me a button down, and I won't wear it. <laughs> <laughs> It's a sports team, Penn State or Ohio State. Okay, we got Logan down there. We're going to go back down and yeah. catch some technique. Coach, you got anything else for me? No, uh, I finally got you gear, which I'm Thank happy you. about. I appreciate that. Better rep it. Yeah, <laughs> oh, well, definitely the polo at school. Yeah. So. Coach, thank you for the time. Great technique today. Keep going. We're crazy, the goats. Crazy How do goats. we follow on social media? Like, what would we follow? Crazy goats is on Facebook. Facebook. Uh, and then, I, got, I posted a bunch of stuff at yeah. you today on yeah. Twitter and I believe Instagram. we're on Twitter. I have a parent who does it. I'm not on Twitter. You um, are. I am, but you I, are. Lost, I lost my password like <laughs> six years ago. And Twitter, and listen, I was coaching. When I set it up, I was coaching, I think, in Oklahoma. And when you leave a university, you lose your email. Yeah. And you can't call them and say, hey, open my old email up. So with Twitter, to reset it, <laughs> you have to like... Yeah, Go you have to, to make a new account. It, so it's just like, make a new account. I haven't been on Twitter, and I don't remember the last time. <sighs> Coach. So, anyways, yeah, Facebook. You can get all information on Facebook or me on on uh, Instagram. I don't even know what my handle is. I, I posted a bunch yeah, of stuff. Yeah, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. Coach, thanks for the time. Great time. Thank you, man. Appreciate everything you do.